shooter. Mm -hmm. And really what we wanted to do is we, we love Soulsborne games. We love Dark Souls, we love Bloodborne. And we really wanted to take that genre and move it in a slightly different direction. So right off the bat, it's got guns. So it's, you know, you do have melee weapons in the game. You can get swords and axes and stuff like that. Another big thing we want to do is it's like seamless drop-in, drop-out co-op. You can play up to three players. They can come with you whenever you want. You can play through the whole campaign together. You don't have to like summon them or attune them to a particular thing to get into the game. Really seamless, really easy. You said up, you said three. Yeah, three. Four was too many. It kind of ruined the pacing of the game. So we, we capped it at three. I like that. I like that. You, I like that you, you tried all the all the options first. Um, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that right out the gate because it'd be hard to not compare it to games that came before it, like the Soulsborne games. And that is one of the first things that was said with my group of friends was this looks like like a Souls game but with guns. And I'm glad like you're kind of leaning in on that because those are great games and this looks like a great game. Yeah. A, sorry, a question right off that is, you know, Soulsborne, we're used to, to melee weapons, adding guns. How did you keep that Soulsborne feel? I think for us, it has a lot to do with the pacing in the game, right? Like, you're not going in and just shooting everything willy-nilly. It's not a run-and-gun game. It's definitely more deliberate. You have to pay attention. you got to learn enemy behaviors. you got to pay attention to the environment. And I think that's what really made uh, the Soulsborne games great is that, you know, you really had to think about what you were doing, and there was an earnest challenge there to compete to uh, mastering the game. And we wanted to give that same feeling, but with guns. Um, now, when we're talking about stage, about uh, there's something special about the the level design of the game. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah. So one of the really cool things about the game is that it's all dynamically generated. So all the individual content's handcrafted, like the boss fights, um, the quests, the NPCs. But our system stitches it all together for you. So if you played the game, you might fight a dragon or meet a crazy old dude in a helicopter. You might play the game and talk to a weird uh, sentient tree and then fight a giant tree ant. And you would come to work the next day and go, hey, did you play Remnant? And you're like, yeah, I did this and this and this. You're like, wow, I did none of that. I actually did this and this and this. And uh, that's a really cool part of the game because A, it makes you want to play the game again. Yeah. And B, you can actually jump into your friend's worlds to see the content in their world and get different parts of the game. Yeah, that's really cool because like, uh, I watch a lot of like uh, speedrunners and, and that kind of thing. And one of the things that they that are akin to do is called randomization. They do randomizers and stuff like that. But this game, like, does it for you. Yeah, and I think it'll be cool because you'll be watching the game stream and you'll be like, wait, like this boss right here, you'll be like, I've never seen that boss before. Uh, what the heck is that? And you might want to jump in and play the game because you're going to see content through other people playing the game that you've never even experienced, even if you beat the game and actually play through the whole story. So what are we going to get to take on these bosses here? Uh, as I understand, you said the weapons that we pick up that we play with, are, we won't have them forever. They're going to degrade over time. No, they, well, so the big difference with the, um, the itemization in this game is that everything's basically a legendary weapon in this game. So it's not like a looter shooter. You're not like finding a million guns all over I'm the place. I'm not picking and dropping. No. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping close to my chest. Exactly. I'm protecting. And it's, it's a cool part of the discovery of the game because when you find a boss or an event or an NPC or a quest, like that usually involves in you getting a cool legendary item. So if you've played through the game and you have different events, you're going to have different items. So really you want to get back into the game, replay the game, or play in other people's worlds to collect all the different items in the game. So my character could potentially collect a bunch of items in my playthrough of the game, then I can hop into my friend's game because he's got some boss I've never seen before and I can go farm. Exactly. And I can take that item back into my game? Yes. What? So you have different boss I, I didn't weapons. want to say, I didn't think it could be true. <laughs> I know, I was like, am I going to get in trouble? He's going to be like, no. Yeah, really, I, yeah. Can, I can play my game and then take all my sweet loot and go play with Zeke Yes. and his game. Yep, you could go in and beat the boss in his game and get, like, you might fight the dragon boss and there's a cool flamethrower weapon that you get from the dragon boss. I've said boss. enough, you made me happy, you're good. <laughs> uh, is, there, is there, like, a, a, a class system? Like, uh, sort of. You start, okay. um, you pick your archetype, which is really just your starting loadout. Okay. But you can equip whatever a, a gear you want. And any items that start on those starting archetypes, you can acquire through other means in the games. Everything's acquired. Even the traits in the game, which is our version of skills, okay. you kind of, you get them by doing different stuff. Like if you talk to that guy in the helicopter, which is a real thing, um, there are certain items you would get from him or that crazy tree I mentioned that actually gives you a trait. And I think that gets in, into another aspect of the game is there's a lot of secrets. So um, if you play the game, you'll probably miss a lot of stuff because there's just hidden ways to interact with things like bring this item here or talk to this person in a certain way or alternate ways to kill bosses or completely hidden areas that all yield un cool, unique rewards. Now, that's one thing that uh, might be a standout from the other, like the, the Born games, Soulsborne games, is quests. You mentioned quests. Yeah, they're not like traditional, like an MMO style quest, but there's definitely okay. like, 
what you would perceive as being a quest, like side quests and stuff like that that you can encounter, and they just get randomly generated into your world. Well, I, I like. What do you mean? Like, what kind of quest? Like, how, are there quest givers, or there? It's just like it's you. Like, how do some, you pick up the yeah, quest? Yeah, how line? do you know sure. you have a quest? Sometimes there's a quest giver. Sometimes you just run into it. Like, there's okay. one one quest where you go into the dungeon and there's these weird brute altar things, and you you can kill them all and you get to the end and there's a weird NPC there that worship, worships the root. Okay. And there's actually multiple ways to beat that quest. You can destroy the altars. You can side, side with the priest. I won't go into too many details because there's some secrets to that sure, quest. Sure. But they all re yield different rewards depending on how you beat the quest. And once I make that choice and I play through that scenario a certain way, is that is that set in stone then for my game? It's set play? in stone, yeah. Excellent. So you would so have to play the game again or jump into someone else's world who hopefully has the same event to complete it a different way to get the alternate reward. That's so interesting. Every person you watch on Twitch is going to be playing a different game when they play this game. And every time they play it. Yeah. From beginning to end, it's going to be different. Uh, you mentioned helicopters, which makes me go, and I see <laughs> buildings and stuff. Which makes me ask, like, because all the other games were in fantasy worlds that were made up. This, where does this game take place? So you start on Earth, and uh, the setting is sort of like the world ended in 1968. There was okay. some cataclysmic event, and these weird root creatures attacked Earth. Um, so you're kind of on a quest to figure out what happened and try to reverse it. It's been a long time. It's been like 80 years since it happened. But you very 80? quickly, 80 years. Okay. Yeah. So he the looks world's, great for being the world's 80 done. Years well, you've been born in this world. <laughs> Although maybe you are a pretty old. Debated. Go ahead. It worked. Um, but we always, we called it like Fantasy Stargate. Like you go through this red crystal thing and you go to all these crazy worlds. There's a world called Yesha, which is this lust jungle world with these weird Bond type creatures. Um, there's another world that's a little more sci-fi. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of variety. We love variety in our games. We don't want to just be fighting the same things over and over again and looking at the same things over and over again. So. I like I like how you refer to some stuff in the game like a gamer. It's like this red crystal thing. You go this red <laughs> crystal thing and you get out of there. I'm sure someone was like painstaking, like making up a name for this like little portal thing. It's like it's a red crystal thing, right? Okay, so you go through that. Well, that's a dirty <laughs> secret. When you work on a game, you actually often don't know the official names of things because you know the code sure, name for yeah, it. Yeah, working title. Um, yeah. But you don't actually know what it's officially name so I don't even know what the red crystal I think it's a dragon crystal I don't even know what it's called well on the, on the topic of uh, you know we, we talked about a couple different type of gamers when we were hanging out before there's the, the gamers like Zeke who want to kind of learn the story of the world as they play through yeah. and then there's me who mashes a through dialogue to get right back into the cutscene uh, are we both going to enjoy this game oh yeah absolutely I think that you could play the game and completely ignore the story, right? It's a bunch of cool action, cool secrets. Not that I will. I respect your writers, but... <laughs> or... You don't get a lie. I like, you don't fight. Get a lie. I like okay. the fight. <laughs> or there's a lot of lore there, but it, you really have to seek the lore out, right? Like, it, through the secrets, there's, like, journals in the world. There's these old computers you can find information on. You can talk to NPCs. You can pick alternate dialogue options. So the lore is there if you want it and you seek it out. So it really lets you play it either way. Like, do you want to ignore it and just do all the cool action, or do you want to find out what's going on? Is it consistent lore? Like, no matter whether Zeke's playing or I'm playing, if we both kind of get to the end of the game, are we going to be like, wow, I can't believe it was so-and-so the whole time? Or are we building to almost totally different worlds as we play through it with no, totally different No, I mean, endings? there is a consistent... So there's consistent elements that you would discover, but you would certainly get different parts of the lore depending on what, you, what events you rolled into your world. So since you're going to encounter different quests or NPCs, you'll get different pieces of the overarching lore. Um, that you might have to compare and swap stories on to try to get a sense of what's going on. Yeah, we're all gonna need a beer afterwards, like a book club. Bitch, I'm rocking now. You see just how I'm flossing now. For the school shit, I think I might be dropping out. Yeah, that little bit bad. I'm gonna go give me that cash. I'm gonna go give me that cash. I get that Gucci, that red. I'm gonna pull up with that stick. That was on me and they drill. I ain't never give a shit. I ain't never give a shit. I'm gonna pull up in that red. That was on me and they drip.